Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the KTLC Fanbase channel. My name is Joey, and today I am counting down my top 10 picks for the most overrated KTLC characters. I feel like a lot of KTLC characters get too much hype in the fandom, so today I'm going to be going over who I think is overrated. This is going to be a really interesting video because I might have some opinions that are a little bit unpopular and I can't wait to share them. So if you're excited for this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe and comment down below. Who do you think is the most overrated K2C character? So without further ado, let's get into number 10. Coming in at number 10, I have Lin Song. So one thing about this list that you have to take into account in order to be overrated, you have to have a lot of ratings in the first place. So a lot of these characters are gonna be very popular characters that I think don't really deserve the hype. So for Lynn, I just feel like, I, I people like her cause she's like soft and like happy and like bubbly. But I feel like in Stellan, she was always argumentative. She never like, I mean, just annoying, um, flat out annoying. And I feel like she doesn't really do that much in the series. She doesn't contribute that much to the plot. And I know I'm gonna be talking about mostly for the fandom, but this also happens to do with like the plot and how the character actually is in the series, not just in the fandom. So yeah, moving on from Lynn, let's get into number nine, Glimmer or Rainy or whatever. I feel like she was only put in the series just to, just like a new character, just to like have Sham Messenger have some sort of new stuff to stir up the plot. She kind of just like gave us a lot of information about the never scene that we wouldn't have known otherwise if, if Rainy wasn't there. So she's just kind of like a plot device. Like she doesn't, like she adds a lot to the series, to the plot you could say, but that's only because Shannon Messenger wants her to. Like I don't really see her having that much of a connection with any of the characters besides like Tam, just cause like she saved him. And a lot of people really, really like her. And I just, I don't, I, I think she's very bland. Uh, she's very overrated in my opinion. That's why she's on this list. And, and people are, are saying like she has like all this backstory, but I, Shannon just like, con she made that happen. Like she probably, and I know how Shannon said that the tribunal in like the first book of the series was Rainey's, but I, I, that tribunal could have just been random and Shannon Messenger just said, oh, that was Rainey's just, just to see like she had a bunch of backstory, but I don't know. Coming in at number seven, I have Marika. Marika, in my opinion, was kind of just added to have some more extra representation to the series, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it just means that her character isn't fully fleshed out. She just kind of joined the Black Swan as like a really powerful Cyane path. So again, it's kind of like with Glimmer, she's just like a plot device. Like the Black Swan needed some sort of extra protection like to fight off Roy, and now Marika suddenly just wants to join the Black Swan. That doesn't necessarily mean she's a bad character. She does like, she has her qualities and I do enjoy her. It's obviously great to have a Cyane path on the Black Swan side, but so many people, so many people just enjoy her and I don't really, I don't really like her character that much and that's why she's number seven. And coming in at number seven, I have Tam. So the thing with Tam, he's, he's kind of like the opposite version of Keef and that's why some people do like him. I don't really like Tam all that much. I, I do like his character. I, I will say that for every character on this list, they are good in some sort of way, obviously. But as I said, to be on this list of overrated characters, you have to be very highly rated. I feel like he is just too highly rated. He's not that good of a character. Like I could say that Marka is properly rated because you know she's not that popular, but for Tam, there are so many people who just love Tam and I just don't really get it. He has a really unique ability. He's a shade. He's all like emo and stuff. But in the end, he's kind of like uncooperative and kind of just, what's the word where you're always like, um, you're always like looking for a fight and you're always like angry and mad at somebody. I, I, I forgot the word, but he's just like that. But as I said, he's on this list just because so many people like him. That's what defines overrated. I feel like he is too overrated. Let's get into number six. I have Amy. So the thing with Amy is so many people wanted to see her in Stellun and she, we got her, she was in Stellun for a little bit, but I don't know why so many people want to see her again. Like she's a human, she's not an elf, she's, she's, a, she's irrelevant, she doesn't know anything. Like I, I get you want to see the human side of her family and Amy was kind of a cool character in like Nightfall or whatever. Like realistically, she's, she's just like a gimmick, she doesn't add anything. I, I don't know why so many people wanted to see her, but I think Shannon gave the fans what they wanted and she was in Stellaloon. So yeah, I don't understand why Amy has so much hype over her. I don't want her to be in book 10. Uh, I want book 10 to be purely action packed focus, wrap up everything in the series. So Amy should not be in there at all. And this is very similar for number five, who is Jensi. Jensi did have his part in Stellaloon as well. And I was very surprised. I, I said many times in my videos, 
I do not want Gen C in book 10 or in book 9 and I don't know really why he was in there. Well they went back to Foxfire and it makes sense that they would see Gen C but he had this whole like reunion thing where he like helped Sophie when she was like feeling sad and stuff and that's cool but I never really got past Gen C or I never saw him past this like book 1 book 2 character who was just there to help Sophie figure out Foxfire. He doesn't have an ability yet, he's not like useful to Black Swan in any way. I don't know why people like him so much other than the fact that he's like a goofy funny character and I do like that part of him but he is just so overrated in my personal opinion. Let's move on to number 4 and that is Dex. So the thing with Dex is, he, I mean, it's kind of hard to deny that he's overrated and you guys like everybody in the comments saying he's underrated but here is my here's my take on this okay he is very underrated you could say in the book series where sophie doesn't you know include him that much and he's a he's a good technopath or whatever and he's not using his abilities to his fullest or whatever you could say that he's underrated in the books but in the fandom it is the complete opposite he is so overrated in the fandom like he's a good character don't get me wrong he's a good character but you guys just propel him to like this god status and I don't think he's ever been like that. Like the cinnamon roll thing, the cinnamon bun thing, I don't really get it. Yeah, he, he's like, you could say that about Gen C. I, that would make more sense if you say that about Gen C. So yeah, Dex takes up the number four spot. I feel like it's very, very properly deserved of Dex. As I said before, he's a great character. Uh, he's just so overrated in the fandom. That's why he's on his list. Now being on his list doesn't mean you're a bad character. All it means is that the fandom thinks so highly of you and I don't feel like it reflects that way in the books. So let's get on to number three. Number three, we have the main character, Sophie Foster. Now I was kind of debating putting Sophie on this list. She's actually really high on the list because a lot of people don't like Sophie because she's kind of like a Mary Sue. She's like overpowered. She is making all the wrong decisions. But there's also another type of fan who has Sophie on this extremely high pedestal after Stelloon where she she's, I like Sophie after Stelloon. But some people, I feel like, go a little bit too far, especially when she burned, like, the Never Seen Storage House. Everyone was going crazy when I thought that was a pretty bad decision. And, like, me. Like, I thought that was bad. I still think it's bad. All in all, I think Sophie actually is pretty properly rated because she has, it's like a balance. Like, there's a lot of people who don't like her and a lot of people who really do like her. And I'm kind of just in the middle, so. But I had to put her on this list because she's the main character. So many people like her and she's 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 just good. She's good. Now here we get into the really, really good parts. So number two, I have Ro. So Ro is just so, so overrated. It's just really hard to even to put this into words. I used to really, really like Ro, especially in like Nightfall flashback. She was amazing. But the whole gimmick of her like hating the elves, hating the sparkles, always making jokes got old really, really quickly. And in Stellan, it was just unbearable. <laughs> like, and I was so, I was glad when she left in Stellan. I mean, it was just getting really, really bad. I do kind of like that she gave Sophie a dagger. That was kind of cool. And I do appreciate the fact that she did push Sophie to, to realize that Keith, you know, has feelings for her. And it, she, it, Ro really did help the So Keith agenda. But apart from that, her jokes, <laughs> I'm just saying like in general, her jokes are not that good. <laughs> and she, she can get very annoying very, very quick. And I hope you guys could realize that in Solo. And I was just waiting for her to leave. And they just let, like, they just, Satan just took her out of the series. Shannon just like whisked her off to like this random, to, to like look for this random ogre. We never heard of her again. So maybe Shannon was tired of running about her too. I don't know. So for most of the characters on this list, I, I, I like them, but for Ro, I'm starting to dislike her. I, I used to really like her, as I said, but now I just don't. And that's why she's number two on the most overrated characters. And you might have been expecting this for number one. I, there's no honorable mentions. Let's just get straight to number one. I have Keith Sensen. Now, I remember what I said before, in order to have, or, or in order to be on this list, you have to be very highly popular and highly rated. And that describes no one other than Keith. Undeniably the poster boy for the series the most popular character by far. He's won every single poll we've done, every single character bracket, he is the winner. And I can understand it, I really can understand it. It almost seems like the series focuses on him and not even Sophie at this point. With all this popularity, you're going to be overrated no matter what. He has so many flaws that people just overlook, like running away, running away. He doesn't know how to properly assess his emotions, even though he's an empath, which is kind of ironic. And I feel like it's just fitting for the most popular character to be the most overrated, and I think it's very accurate. So please let me know what you think about this. Is Keith the most overrated K2C character? 
I feel like it's either Kiefer Rowe, it's one of those two. So please let me know what you think of my ranking in the comment section below, as I said. And if you enjoy the video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. I really hope this wasn't popular because I want to get you guys thinking. I want to get you guys commenting and thinking about this list because I feel like there were some unpopular choices here. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one.